Yeah, yeah, mic check, one, two. Let's set, set everything up. You're tuning in to the B-Boy and Bigger Dojos. International Teacher Camp, day one. We are about to kick it off today with some live knowledge drops. Let's see who's joining in today. Let me know in the comments who's tuning in. Let me set up some streaming stuff before we start getting to the good stuff right away. I see Jam Funk, Bigger Meow, People in Mosca, Phil Rock 95. Who else do we have in the house today? Let me know in the comments who are you and where you're from. Like I said, all right, this is the beginning of the international teacher camp for the people and bigger dojo this year. We did this uh, in the springtime for the first time ever, and, and it's about to be on for the second time live. The idea, the main idea is to give as much value and as much tools and experience for the people who are teaching, who are into teaching or, or who want to get going as a breaking teacher. Germany and Spain in the house, Italy. That's why we have a bunch of amazing guests for the next two weeks. We're gonna start off with Zegu today. And on Thursday, we'll go deep with poll one on a similar Instagram knowledge, knowledge drop like this one. And after that, after that, next week we go deeper into into some seminar level stuff. We're gonna rock some uh, deep sessions with Storm from Germany, from Battle Squad, and Nefeli Zioti from from Cyprus, and then some people who are have been part of the Dojo's teacher uh, education courses. We have a course that teaches the teachers and. Uh, we're gonna get some of the people, the alumni, the graduates, and current people who are on the course right now to build with us next week too. And most likely also Gatsu from Japan is gonna join on Thursday. Different topics, different tools, and, and such. So get all of this at learn.bboydojo.com. Sign up right now so that we know that, that you will be getting all the updates about what's going on but today we're gonna get we're gonna zeku from breaking mia live a very very special and a, and a very talented passionate and a driven young b-boy who's very inspiring and has taken many of the big titles battle of the year freestyle session and bis in in china but besides just being ill b-boy He's somebody who works hard for the community. He works, uh, runs, his, runs his studio and, and also has other kind of business ventures going on. So ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's get Zeku online. Do it. At any time, if you have any questions, feel free to get them all over here in the chat. We got What's up, Zeku focus. in the house. What's, What's up, my brother? How's everything, man? Everything is great. Doing all good. What time is it over there? By yourself. It's 9 p.m. Good, right man. now. So after this, I'm heading back to sleep. You ready for a new yes, day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about yourself? How are you doing? Doing good, brother. Doing good. It's 2 p.m. right here. I'm taking a little break to hop on and, and chat and share. And, man, I'm excited to, to be a part of this. And thank you for having me. It's an honor. Excellent. I appreciate your time. You're a busy man, so appreciate your, your time to get on the call. Like what's been going down like lately what what has happened let's say today earlier on how was your day this far well i mean this happened yesterday <laughs> oh okay okay so this is this surprise, is great this, this is awesome this is real life you know like these are the things that happen yeah. and these are the things that i feel people don't take into consideration you know that being a an athlete all the way isn't the most promising thing you know you you, you need to have not not so much a plan b but you just need other options, you know, to be able to navigate. So 
after this, I got to call a couple specialists, see what happened. Uh, it was a slight fracture in the finger. So we're going to figure it out and, uh, and get right back to it. The good thing is I have another hand. That's the great thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's some of the things that, that people don't see when, um, when they see the final battles on big stages, whatever they see amazing things on the live stream, but they don't see the struggle that it took to get there. Actually, this is part of it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So today we're going to build about, about teaching in general and also business breaking professionalism and, and uh, business mind that, that is very strong in you. I remember I saw you first time in, in Mexico live. I saw footage before. Yes. But we met in Mexico and already back then you're like, all right, I've got a bunch of business ideas I'm working on and uh, all kinds of stuff. So besides being a nail breaker, can you share slightly what kind of other things you have going on right now? Uh, so right now at the moment, uh, well, one first, that, that, that trip was a, was a very eye-opening experience, you know, like for, and to tell you here on camera, you know, that was the first time I got to see you in person to see you get down and I took your workshop that day and it was very insightful. I, I could tell that you were so passionate about what you were doing that it drove me. I, I never take workshops just because I was never really put on, on game with like, you know, you should take a workshop regardless of whatever level you're at or whatever status you may have, you know, and something just kind of told me, you know, try it out. And, and I learned so much from that workshop, man. So, so thank you for even, and you took time to sit there and break down certain moves for me. So I really appreciate that, man. So on camera, thank you. For, for being so welcoming and, and being educational and being informative. For real, man, really appreciate that. A lot of the times the OGs in the scene make that a little bit complicated. So to have someone like you, you know, the Moys, all, all of you guys, you guys help keep the glue together, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, thank but, you. But yeah, man, in, in Mexico during that time, I was just opening up my studio, Breaking MI, for those of you who don't know. Uh, and at the same time, we were opening up an MMA gym, which, you know, now those things are all in full swing. Uh, the... Breaking MI side is doing very well. You know, we're in the commercial industry. We're in the battle industry. Uh, I manage talent. We have endorsement deals through the company, which is amazing. Uh, I employ a lot of my friends, you know, so it's a lot of, it, it's, it's friends and family that, that run that business, you know, and it's, it's really, it's our business. It's not my business. It's our business because we all benefit from it. And I'm not, I'm not there to, for it to be Zeku and them, you know, it's Breaking MI as a whole. It's not Zeku and then the team, you know. Breaking MI is its own brand. I just so happen to have been the visionary for it, but I, I do my best to try and disconnect it because, you know, what I do is very important, but what Dougie does is important. What Nels does for the company is important. What Lynx does for the company is important. What, they, what everybody does is important for the company. So it's not, it's not, I don't feel like it's mine, you know, it's, it's ours. So that's one thing. That's a really fun project. Uh, we have Undefeated, which is our event that we do here locally, which started off in the gym. And then now we've been able to rent venues across South Beach and, and just go, we've been to Orlando with the event and it's a fully integrated event. So all the production is, is in-house from ourselves and the production company that I have with uh, one of my business partners. And yeah, man, we've just been building. We're doing our best to, to be the change in the community, whatever we don't like, whatever we don't agree with, besides complaining and going on Facebook and writing a whole status about it. You know, we're going to go and try and do something about it because we're young now. We have the youth. We have the mind. We have the opportunity. Why not try and do something about it? Uh, so we have the MMA taking gym. Taking that risk and making those moves. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have the MMA gym now, which is, is really, that's a really fun project for me. It's the way that me and my dad kind of mended our relationship uh, growing up. I met him when I was 15. So we opened up this gym together. And now we actually have a fighter that fought his first pro fight after five years. So it's been five years of making it through a pandemic, you know, learning the business, the ins and outs, you know, getting screwed over, like, you know, like everything and figuring it out. And now we're in the door, you know, we're in the conversation, which is great. So I just like getting involved in whatever's fun. If it's fun, let's, let's do it. <laughs> so that's the passion. That's the drive that it takes. Yep. Uh, like you said, there's, there's people behind it, a team like, or, or like a business like that doesn't work by itself. There has to be a team and there has to be, delegation for for all the members of the team can you share slightly what kind of teams do you have you said some names over there but how, what kind of team is it behind breaking mia and also the mma gym and, and all yeah. that what kind of teams so break teams run it breaking mi breaking mi by far definitely has our biggest team right now uh we have people that are behind the scenes that we don't even know about so i don't want to miss nobody's names but definitely like the main people that that i work with closely all the time is we have trunks which is dougie he's our general manager 
We have Nels, who is our head instructor we have, uh, for our on-site program. And then we have Lynx, who is our head, instruct head instructor for the online program. Uh, we have Sonja. Uh, she's also an artist, but she is basically the one who oversees everything that we do and just kind of consults us. Um, and then we have uh, Zarin. He was also a breaker. He's, a, he's just like a marketing genius. This guy is this guy's amazing. And he helps us with all of our digital marketing. He believed in us from the beginning. Uh, Sonja is also part of our content team. Then we have uh, Tons, who's our DJ, but he's also an event coordinator with me. So we have a really big team and uh, we have Fusion, who's our graphic designer. Our, our, he, he's like the creative mind behind everything we do. I sit with him and brainstorm and come up with the ideas, the color schemes, the logos, uh, all the things that make the brand look pretty. That's him, you know, undefeated and everything kind of ties in. So that, that, that's the beauty about working with, with the people that I love and my friends and my family is that they're also involved in the MMA side. You know, if I need something, if, they, if, if it needs, if the, if the gym needs something, they're there. It's not, oh, we're not involved in that. You know, they're involved in everything. Just like I tell them I'm involved in everything that they do, you know, because it's, at the end of the day, it's for all of us. So that team that I just mentioned kind of works with everything. Uh, my priority has always been for them to just focus on that because everything else, it doesn't really tie into breaking like that. You know, breaking MI was started because I never wanted any of my friends to have to go get a real job, you know, and then not be able to break and practice. So with the MMA stuff, that's just more passionate for me. That's really more me, my dad, our pro fighter. And we have a, a promoter that helps us out, which his name is Frank as well. And he kind of helps us get the fights and all that stuff. And now we're getting involved with other promotions. Uh, we just fought at Titan FC, which was on the UFC Fight Pass. For anybody that knows about fighting, UFC Fight Pass is a huge platform to be on. Uh, so now that team's going to start to grow because now there's more contracts involved, there's numbers involved, you know, there's imaging involved, the voice, licensing, all that crazy stuff. So that team's going to start growing with time. Undefeated has the same team that Breaking MI does. Logistics is also a part of our team. Um, she's She doesn't even really have like a role. She's just so involved, you know, like she teaches, she brainstorms, she's involved in our meetings. Uh, she pitches ideas. She's just an amazing asset to the team, you know, and she's also doing her amazing things on the side as well, you know. So uh, the team is pretty big. It diversifies as the, the businesses come, of course. But right now, the biggest thing that we have is, is that breaking in my end undefeated, for sure. Beautiful. And they work together as well in a way that if you coach top level breakers, they need yes. specific additional like, supporting training and the MMA yeah. team uh, is yeah, perfect yeah. for that. Exactly. Yeah, it for all ties in. MIA, yeah, for breaking MIA, how do you see the long-term vision? Are you training the top breakers or are you training people to get into breaking or is it both? Is it combined? It's combined. It's both. You know, we, we our goal with breaking MIA is to just expose the general public to what it is that we do in the most elegant way that we can. You know, we, we want people to look at breaking MI and see the people in there and look at them like the LeBron James, you know, the Serena Williams, the Conor McGregor's the, you know, like we, we want them to look at us as actual professionals, not athletes, not artists. Cool. Like whatever you want to label it, you label it. I just want to be known as a professional. I want people to respect what I do, whatever you want to call it. Cool. That's, that doesn't affect me. But if you don't at least see it as a profession, then, you know, that's a problem because we can't move forward in the community. We can't move forward in the culture. We can't sit down and have, uh, negotiations and, and business conversations with certain brands because we're not looking at it in a professional way and, and to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that was one of the biggest hinders for the generations before us. You know, it was it was so street oriented that there was no professionalism there. And there might have been because there was a lot of bright people involved. It's just that wasn't the that wasn't the culture at the time, you know? And that's why now I'm I'm really happy and I'm really proud to see everything moving in that direction, you know, with the Olympic talk and all the brands that are being involved. It's beautiful to see it because our whole goal this time is, yeah, we love breaking and we love the street culture about it. Man, I grew up in the hood, man. I grew up fighting. I grew up doing all that stuff. doesn't mean that's what I want to do for the rest of my life, you know? Like, I, I woke up at 5 a.m. every day to not wake up at 5 a.m. every day one day, you know? So it's like our, our goal is to just expose breaking to, to the highest platforms possible right foot, in, the, in the most rightful way, you know? We don't – we want the – Everybody that goes through Breaking MI, we just did a Pepsi commercial, uh, commercial, which we're super grateful about. And, you know, it's it's the consistent the consistent conflicts that happened. I'm pretty sure you've booked commercials, you've booked uh, movies and all that stuff. You know, we don't get treated the best, unfortunately. And I, I feel like we, we brought that upon ourselves because nobody's going to respect you if you don't respect yourself. So it's 
right now we're just trying to set the building blocks that we can, you know, because you have the B-Boy Dojo doing it as well. You have Break Free doing it as well. You have Alchemy Breaking Academy doing it as well. You have so many schools uh, and platforms doing this that we don't really want to say that we're innovating or paving the way. We're just adding what we can to this, you know. The breaking doesn't belong to us. We belong to breaking. So we're doing whatever we can to add, evolve, and improve breaking as a whole, as an artistry, as a sport, as a career, as a lifestyle. We just want to help improve because at one point I, we didn't have that, you know. I didn't have that. It's the reason why I had to open up that place at 18 years old. You know, like I, I, to some extent, and this is being very honest and transparent, to some, some extent, I didn't want to have to open that up at 18 years old. I live in Miami, man. I should be living my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, but, it was nece- but it was necessary. And, and, and I love it, man. And it's, it's built relationships for me. It's put me in rooms I would have never imagined. Uh, I get to have conversations like this, you know. And it's, I value this over let's talk about some breaking, you know. I really do because this is something that can, you don't know where this conversation can lead to. This conversation can lead to something so much bigger than we would have ever thought, you know? And it's us trying to improve and, and do what we can and play our role in the community. Yeah. And it's a learning process as well. Like you learn by doing this. We didn't go to, to schools to do yeah. what we do. And my studio too has been on it for 12 years already. And, and That's every amazing. year we learn something new. It's a struggle every year and we learn something new about overcoming it opens up new doors so when when people go when people ask me if i went to college i tell them yeah i tell them i went to dcu dcu <laughs> you know what dcu is dcu shoot DC, dcu <laughs> is the crib university the crib is like home here in the u.s the crib <laughs> university there you go we went to dcu learn as we went yeah there you go exactly how do you approach teaching yourself do you teach classes at breaking MIA yourself or do you work behind the behind the scenes more so I do both uh for a while I was the one that was teaching taking the phone calls doing everything and you know with time we started to grow the team and then there was a period where I wasn't teaching because I wanted to focus on evolving the brand you know just kind of sitting down and and being a visionary and, and making sure all my energy was focused on being able to to expand and scale you know the team maintains which was the goal I wanted a team that could maintain what I had built and then have time to be able to scale and grow and think and get creative because you can't do both at the same time. It gets really complicated because um, so many tedious tasks you have to do. If you're worried about, I don't, I don't know if you guys have taxes over there, but if you're worried about taxes and, and you know, paperwork and all that stuff, you can't sit there and brainstorm the next biggest idea. You can add a survival and it's not going to be great. That's what I've learned, you know? So now that everything kind of balanced out a little bit more and now I'm actually teaching again, I've been teaching for about three to four months now. Uh, but it's a mentorship program. So this is what I mean about we're, we want to introduce people to breaking. And we also want to be the ones to take some of these athletes to the next level. Because I feel like we do have the assets and resources and knowledge to some extent to be able to do so, you know. Uh, so as of right now, the mentorship program is our top students. Whoever we feel have been our top students, I, I handpicked everybody. And it, it didn't have to be top student in the sense of skill. They could have just been on effort. I'm really big on effort. I, I don't care how good you are but if if you can show me that you want to be as good as you tell me you want to be then that's cool with me that works I can work with that because at one point I wasn't that good you know I was terrible and it took people uh being open-minded and being willing to teach me but it also took me to be open-minded and willing to be taught you know so that's one of the biggest things that has that's has that's that catapult my career so this mentorship program is for me to be able to dump out all that information that I have not just from breaking, but when you sit down in a meeting, you know, you should, you should shake everybody's hand. You should introduce yourself. You know, you should dress a certain way. Like being able to mentor these artists and these athletes from the ground up, you know, because being dope and breaking is 20%. Being able to articulate yourself, being able to market yourself, being able to brand yourself, that's different. You know, I heard a really, a really amazing quote not too long ago that said, don't be an artist, be a brand, because artist doesn't have any limits. A brand does. And a brand does have limits, you know, so you have to be a brand. And that's kind of what I'm doing with that mentorship program. I'm teaching them and they're getting really dope at breaking and that's awesome. But this happens. And then what's the point of all that? You know, but when you translate it, it's yes, a, indeed. It's a different situation. I love teaching, man. You know, uh, it's one of the, it's one of the greatest gifts that we're able to do once you acquire something, be able to give it back, you know, and see somebody else flourish from that. So 
I come from nothing. Be able to see people take this and do something with it as well. And if I can, you know, give you a dollar, a place to sleep, a meal, a move, whatever I can, and you get to live out your dream, man, I'm all for it. Sign me up. Yes, indeed. And also being in a position where if something like that happens, you get injured with the dance, but that doesn't take away your ability to work. There's mm -hmm. different platforms that you, you are expressing yourself with and helping out other people. So that's 100%. a blessed situation to be at so that mentally you can still give and provide for your people, even though your body is not accepting of teaching course. a class, for, for example, or, or rocking a show. So of big course. after that. Thank you, that. brother. Thank you. Yeah. How about how about how do you maintain balance in in competing at the top level in the world world top level in in competitions, but also working with with uh, organizations and and teaching, mentoring people. How do you maintain balance? So that's always going to be the most difficult part, and I know you know that as well because you, you you've done it as mm -hmm. well for the last twelve years. That's the most difficult part, and. And I feel like I can ask you this confidently. There, I don't think we ever really reach a point where you figure out that balance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, yeah. and I'm, start, I'm you already starting to towards it on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, uh, you, you never hear anybody say like, oh, life is too long or like, oh, yeah, I have just no pressure. You know, like I'm, I'm good. You know, everybody is, man, I'm under a lot of pressure. You know, everything's too fast. Life's too short. You know, like you're always going to feel like that. You're always going to feel like that if you're somebody who strives to be the best version of yourself every single day. You know, if, if you have people counting on you, there is no cap on success. And that's why I always say, you know, you never want to be satisfied, but you want to be happy. You want to be happy with, I'm happy with the consistent chase. I'm happy with knowing that I'm never going to get to a point where I'm settled. Like, oh my God, yeah, I did it all. Because I'm always going to want more, but I'm okay with that which allows me to balance myself out the way that I feel is proper because there's no balance that's correct. And balance all comes down to personality, whatever you like, you know, it's your vision, it's your career, it's your life. You have to find that balance. Everybody can chip in and give you their advice on what balance is, but it's, it's not yours. It's coming from somebody else. That needs to be something that you find on your own. And I do, I do a lot of meditation, man. I do, I sit by myself a lot. I, I'm by myself a lot. I, I think a lot. And I've been in a lot of situations at a really young age that have taught me that. And I've been able to experience it gratefully, you know. So right now, that's why you, I don't know if anybody has noticed, but I'm not as active as I once was, you know, competing all over the world, traveling every single place. Um, I don't mean to put anything on blast, but, you know, my goal as a, as a human while I'm on this earth is to be able to give up the most informative information that I can. I'm not the brightest, but whatever I do find out about that I think is useful, I want to put it out there. And this is for any aspiring breakers that want to travel the world and be the number one break in the world. I had that dream. When Focus met me, I had that dream, huge. And I was super involved in that vision. As you get older, which is going to happen, time doesn't stop. That's not feasible. Financially, it's not feasible, you know? And, and you have to start creating these avenues that are allowed you to, allow you to do that in a way where you're not stressing about it, you know? You're doing it because you love to do it. But I'm also not telling you to go get a job. I'm not telling you that. You can, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm kind of just telling you to believe in your vision, believe in your dream, and grow it bigger than what you think it is. Because being a world, a world-class breaker is this big. Being a world-class breaker doesn't do anything for you, you know? You, you win the jam, and for 20 seconds, everybody's going crazy. Oh, my God, you're the champ. Everybody loves you. You go back to your hotel, the reception at the hotel doesn't even know who you are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and that's mm -hmm. just the reality of it. I, I, I experienced that. And it's, you have to be a little, a little crazy to want to keep chasing that feeling, you know? And, and I'm crazy because I want to keep chasing that feeling. But it needs to be strategic. You know, I take care of my mom and I take care of my grandparents and things people don't know about. Like, I'm one person in this family that holds everything down. My mom, my dad, my grandparents, my businesses, my teams, you know, my personal things in my life. I'm 23, man. You know, it's it's more than just balancing breaking and business. It's balancing my life, you know? So if I could just travel the world and compete, that would be great. But that's not where breaking is. And that's why platforms like the Olympics, when people were talking down about it and, you know, uh, making it a headache, it was kind of like, this isn't for you. This isn't, this might not even be for me. I might see a nice contract out of the Olympics, but it's not really going to be me or you. It's going to be the younger kids that are going to see those amazing life-changing opportunities. So 
that's what I mean. Right now, my, my balance is just figuring out what I could do for this community that's going to be long lasting besides just winning a bunch of breakdance battles. You know, I, I, I did that and it, was, and it was fun. It yeah. was fun and it was cool. I'm also not a person. Uh, my whole team knows this. I don't do back to backs. If I do, it's because I have nothing to do. What am I doing proving to you that I can win an, uh, win an event twice? You know, when I could have one of my little homeboys win the second time. Why don't I train him mm -hmm. to win? And now, now he has a win. Now he gets to experience that. Now he's motivated, you know? It, it's, it's really finding the balance between selfish and selfless, you know? You have to find that balance. That's what I'm trying to find out, being a little selfish and being a little selfless because sometimes too selfless can get you in a, in a bad situation and being too selfish can get you in a bad situation. So, And it's mostly with myself. So right now I'm just finding the balance of, what is impactful, what is life changing, what is something that's actually gonna gonna inspire your kids watch that YouTube video that's at that event. That's my goal. That's my balance. I don't really want to go out and just win anymore. You know, that's that's all fun. The Olympic that's what the Olympics is for, to be honest, for me. Because you win these events and it's not it's not really a big deal and, and I understand the promoters are doing their best. You know, it's not it's not it's also not easy for them. But if, if, you know, if there's funding involved and there's all these things involved, you know, you are going to get the email of what's the proposed rate, you know, and it's some of us are a little bit more involved on the business side of things. And that's just that's just what it is. That's inspiring. For a young b-boy coming up who wants to be a teacher, who wants to make another kind of an impact in the scene, not just do competitions, what would be your top three advice to take that lead, take that step to find the confidence to do it? To be, to be, you're saying, an instructor in the breaking community? To become a person who, who teaches workshops, who teaches. classes, or maybe even starts his own school one day. You got to love giving back. I think you got to love giving back. If you're, if you're a person that struggles uh, with the art of release, which is, you know, I take the clothes off my back for the people that I love since I was a kid. You know, I grew up with a single mother. You know, we lived, we were homeless at one point. We lived in a car, you know, like my mom, very early on instilled me you know the people that you love you whatever you have they have so if you're not that type of person where you believe that whatever you have belongs to everybody else as well and it's not just for you if you can't get to that state of mind i wouldn't require it because i mean i, I don't know if you can agree with me but if we wanted to get rich we would have probably not opened up a break dance or you know a dance studio if we wanted to get rich you know <laughs> I, we could have, it, oh, it's, i can't agree on that yo easily been involved in real estate, been involved, you know, in, 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 in so many other avenues that produce cash like this, you know, and that wasn't the case, you know, I know you did it because there was a passion there you, that I could tell there's something genuine about what you do, you know, I, I can't pinpoint it, but I can, you can just feel it, it, it radiates. And it, it, if your if your love for, for what you do doesn't radiate, don't do it. Because at the end of the day, it is a business and bills need to get paid. People need to get paid. People need to get taught, you know, and it's, it's not as easy as you open the doors and people come take class. You got to run ads. You need money. You know, like this is a business that consistently needs cash flow and needs capital. So if it's not something that you're willing to sacrifice everything for, don't do it. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you what not to do. I could tell you how to do it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's when you get in there that you go, oh, nobody told me about this. Because that's what happened to me. I thought it was going to be easy. It smack you in the face. <laughs> it smacked me in the face. Unfortunately for me, I'm prideful, you know. So once I start, I'm, I'm finishing. So mm -hmm. I just took everything to the chin and it was what it was. And, and in 2019, when I was winning the, the biggest events in the world, our business was at the ground. So, you know, that was an insane time for, for me, for the team. So if you're willing to sacrifice everything, if you're passionate, if you love to give, if you love to see the smile on that five-year-old when they come in and take that first class, and feel like they earned them all the confidence in the world. If that gets you up in the morning, if that puts a smile on your face, then do it. But if you're just trying to be somebody, you know, if you're just trying to do it for Instagram, if you're trying to do it for a stance highlight clip, you know, like don't do it for that because it's, it's not worth it. It really isn't worth it. It's worth it for me because I love what I do because sometimes there's no results for a really long time and that's okay because I love it, you know? So you, you have to love it. That That's my... That's my biggest advice. You have to love it. If you're not passionate about it, it's, it's just going to work against you. And I don't want to see that happen to anybody, you know? It, you have to be passionate about it. We struggle. We have our obstacles. But believe me, we take it with a smile on the face like it's just another day, you know? Because we love it. 
and it, a challenge comes up and then everybody knows at least on my team that something comes up and I'm like damn I'm like man that's a good one that one's tough yeah. we're gonna have to figure this one out you know <laughs> but but that's yeah. the change that's the change in mentality you know it could it could easily be like damn we have this issue how are we gonna figure this out no 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 this is too hard no it's actually okay this is a good one this is hard we haven't had to deal with this this is what we've been this is what we've been trying to get to. This means we're getting to another level. Let's push. Let's figure this mm-hmm. out. And there's times where we sit there and there's no solution. And it seems like the world is ending, but it's not because there's another day and there's another solution and there's a, it's another opportunity. So you got you to be passionate. You got to be involved in and out for sure. Whew. I guess that's pretty much it for today. You yeah. shared a lot. I <laughs> Not bad. I gave pumped. you a lot, I'm man. I'm so getting pumped. I'm getting <laughs> pumped. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get back to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what it is, man. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Thank you for your time. Super inspiring to hear you build. And I wish you all the best and and, uh, success both in in, in family and and business and everything, everything outside of it, too. Thank you, folks. Heal quick with the the injury, and I hope to see you on travels real soon. Thank you, brother. Yes, and once again, man, thank you so much, Focus. You... You've been such an inspiration and such a pillar to the community, man, from your style to the way that you carry yourself. You know, I, I've never heard of, I've never heard anybody speak down on your name. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's always said you're very respectful, very professional. And even when I've met you, man, so a big kudos to you, man. I want to give you your flowers while you're here. So thank you so much. Thank you for believing in a young kid. You know what I'm saying? I know that that's really hard, the transition, you know, so I, I, I really appreciate that. And, and it means the world. And Anybody that you've crossed paths with, just know that you've left a, a, a good mark with, man, because I've only heard great things about you. So thank you. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. You already Thanks, know, man. brother. Have a great night, man. Yeah, Sleep we well. Stay in touch. <laughs> we stay in touch. Awesome. Take care, brother. All right. Peace.